I'm Bill Williams. This is my wife, Gloria, and we live in Palm Springs, California. And we are a Kone owner, number 13. My name is Ken Norton. I have Kone number 85. I'm Gary Gallagher. I'm Marcia Gallagher. And we have Kone number 188. Auto shows attract millions of car lovers each year. Manufacturers from around the world display their slickest and most modern products. But in 1976, the up-and-coming Clone stole the show. An automobile built entirely by hand from a small factory in Santa Barbara, California. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hey, man, it's super. It's dynamite. Excessive is what I'd say. <laughs> I don't think if you got the money for this, you worry about gas. I think it would feed a lot of starving people for the price of this expensive toy. No, I know that's not an American car. You don't drive it, you worship it. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful design. I saw the first one that they ever made. A friend of mine saw it in the car show. And I said, well, it's too flashy. I don't need it. It's, it costs too much. And then a year later, my wife was driving down the street in Beverly Hills and saw another Kone. And uh, I fell in love with it again. And as a result, I went to the factory in Santa Barbara and... Uh, the end result is that I now have a Clone. Well, he said that he saw something, but he couldn't read the name on the car, and he thought it was a Clinton. And I have a couple of friends who know all about everything that's happening in town, so I call one of them and asked about a Clinton. And she said, there's no such car. Maybe you mean the Clone. I met Durston, O'Gara Coach Company, and we sell a lot of different exotic motor cars. We have people come in here from all over the world. They see that car, and it excites them. They love it. Old ladies look at it, young kids, they all love the car. I've never seen such an emotional motor car uh, before, and I've been in the business for 15 years. One of the main reasons why I bought the Clone A is the fact that they were only going to make 250 of them and then stop production on that model. I wanted a car that was classy and also wanted a car that everyone else did not have. Plus the fact my wife loved it. and. Uh, in order to stay at home and eat regularly, keep my clothes clean and wash, I had to buy Clone. The neighbors are a little nervous about it. They've taken a good look at the car and a good look at us, and they made the comment that they didn't really realize we had reached that high station in life. <laughs> it seems to me that uh, other expensive car owners are very often of a different sort. They're people who perhaps are established wealthy. They've had their money through generations. Clone people you don't know whether they have a dime or several million. They're hardworking, I suspect, and I, I kind of say adventurers. Rolls Royces uh, are all over Palm Springs, but uh, very seldom when you see a, a Clone drive by. I think maybe there's only two in town. We went to a very exclusive restaurant. It was the in place just about a month ago. We were coming in the same time as a Rolls Corniche. So as he drove up, the valet said, just a minute. The Rolls had started to aim toward the number one spot. He moved the Rolls out of the way, stopped the Rolls over here, and directed Gary back into the number one position. And we got out of the car, and that Rolls owner was fit to be tied. He was ready to kill. <laughs> he wanted to strangle that parking lot attendant. We loved it. In reference to the kind of person that buys a Clone, it's, you probably wouldn't find very many people that have a Clone only. Well, I just sold about three of my cars. I, I have left. I have a Rose left, a 65. I have a um, station wagon for my wife. <laughs> I have uh, a van, and I have a Jeep. In buying my Clone, I went up to the factory in Santa Barbara, uh, so I sat down in a, a model Clone. The seats were measured, the height was measured, and uh, basically the car was built around me, which is very helpful, because now I want my cowboy hat in the car. <laughs>